for us, and by us I mean the whole family, not just me and baby. Rural living has meant living with lots of power cuts. Last one was about 11 hours. Why does this happen? Well, it happens because there are lots of trees around here with power lines and it's really badly managed and power lines obviously fall down when the tree falls. And on a windy day like today, I'm kind of worried that it might happen again. And if the UK media are to be believed, we don't believe them really, but if they are to be believed, then we might also get more regular blackouts imposed on us by the national grid. The solution, of course, is to get a home battery. No, 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 no. Home batteries make perfect sense. The idea being that you use them in conjunction with solar panels and then you're obviously charging up the battery throughout the day when you don't need the power and then you use it later on in the day when you're back home cooking and all the rest of it. And of course then you're using free energy from your panels. But not only that, you can use a home battery with cheap rate electricity during the night and then you can use that during the day, which can also save you an absolute fortune. But the kind of battery that we're talking about here is quite a big one, the one that would live on the side of the house or in the shed or something like that, and it would cost a lot of money, many thousands. But the problem with most home batteries is that they're not much good during a blackout, because the moment there's a blackout, there's no grid connection. The moment there's no grid connection, the battery will stop working. It's a safety device, otherwise you could be sending power back to the grid and you could electrocute people working on the line just outside. So you've got a couple of options. You could have a battery that's got an isolated circuit and it means that if the uh, grid goes down, if you have a blackout, you've still got a circuit that you can turn on and use. So effectively a couple of plug sockets or something like that, that you can plug things into, which is still, still really good. Uh, on the other end of the scale, you've got the Tesla Powerwall. The Powerwall is an amazing bit of kit. What you can get is a Powerwall plus something called the power gateway. And the power gateway is a little box that lives with the power wall. And the moment the grid stops giving you any power, the power gateway cuts off the connection to the grid and it actually takes you off grid completely and uses the battery in the power wall to power your home. That's amazing. That's pretty much the gold standard. And trying to find any other battery that does that seems to be incredibly difficult. I had an installer come here uh, to quote me for a power wall and um, it's about £15,000 or something like that. That's a lot of money. And the problem is, we tend to move quite a lot. My wife has um, a nomadic spirit, I suppose, is the way of putting it. She likes to move. And we could spend £15,000 for a lovely power wall, but then if we move after a year, or even two years, that's a lot of money to be putting into the house. You could argue that you get the money back when you sell, but do you? I don't know. Um, and finding that money obviously is quite difficult and you have to get a big loan. So we're back to the problem that we have power cuts here and what do we do about it? Well, we used to have the Ionic 5, the wonderful Ionic 5, and yes, I miss it daily and cry about it occasionally, but the Ionic 5 is a fantastic car that has something called vehicle to load. Vehicle to load means that you can plug something into the car. You can actually use your car like a giant battery, plug stuff into it. You can't really plug the whole house into it, unfortunately, but you can plug a few appliances and that's fantastic and we had a power cut for 11 hours oh, no. oh, the the fridge. Fridge. The fridge. and it did save us oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Whoa. if you want to see that watch the video so that's fantastic but we've sold the ionic 5. it's an emotional moment it really is <laughs> um other cars do it as well by the way the new mgs and the kia nero and um a few others anyway so it, it's great if you can get a car that's got a vehicle to load do it, I really recommend it. With no Ionic 5, I feel like the safety net is now gone. If we have a blackout, we're in the dark. So what do we do about it? Well, I was watching a video um, and someone was charging a car using a battery. They had a portable battery in, in the back of the car and they were charging their car using it. And then I was thinking, well, that's a brilliant idea, isn't it? So I thought, that's what we need. It's a perfect solution. It's a battery, it's portable, I can uh, charge it during the night uh, on cheap rate, use it during the day. It will do us for a blackout for at least powering the essential stuff like the fridge. So I bought an EcoFlow Delta 2. Do you want to see it? You know what people love on YouTube? They love unboxing videos. So here it is, the EcoFlow Delta 2 and the extra battery as well. So what you can do with these, it's kind of cool, is that you can plug one battery, in fact you can plug two batteries into the master one, which means you can have three kilowatt hour storage in total. Pretty cool, but I just went for two kilowatt hours because I'm not 
I'm not made of money. So let's do some unboxing. Okay, and we're inside. Now the first thing you'll see in that is the user manual. It's got a 24 month warranty. UV varnish, lovely. It would be nice if they didn't have to use polystyrene. You know, something I've been thinking about recently is, it's amazing how good Apple stuff is because you, got, you don't find any polystyrene in their boxes. And there it is. The first thing you'll see here on the side is that it says extra battery port. Quite a funky little connector there, so that's where we're gonna plug in the extra battery. So looking at the front, oh look at this, look at this, oh it's a dream, it's a dream. I'm not going to remove it yet, I'm, not, I'm going to save that for later. We've got four USB-A ports, two of them are normal ones, um, two are fast charge ones, two USB-C's at 100 watts, so they'll charge things really nice and quick. And you've got a little USB on off button there, you've got a Bluetooth pairing light just there, and a power button there. Okay, let's spin it around. Look at all these ports, it's an absolute dream. Um, okay, well first of all, up here there's a little cover. And this one here, it says solar slash car input. That's just for plugging into your sort of cigarette lighter socket. Here it says extreme charge, that really just means that's where you plug in the battery to charge it up. And here we've got something overload protection, 20 amp max, which is kind of a scary looking little button in there. So then you can see we've got four normal plugs. And then down the bottom here, we have a cigarette lighter socket, which is useful, again, if you're camping, uh, maybe you've got stuff that needs the cigarette lighter. So you can plug that in there, so that's really good. And then you've got these two little things, DC5521 output ports. It's the kind of thing that you might use for, I don't know, all I can think of is my daughter's keyboard, I think, uses that sort of port. I'm assuming it's going to be the plug to actually charge the thing. So that's how we plug it in. Some silica gel. Do not eat. And that's where you plug it into the car. And that is the little port, which I never knew was called a DC5521. But there we go. That's what it looks like. Far more important than all the ports, I suppose, is what's on the inside. And of course, the inside is an LFP battery and I spoke to Dr. Ewan McTurk recently on one of my videos about the Nissan LEAF. Have a look at that if you haven't already. You know one of the things that a lot of naysayers say, uh, they say about all the kids mining cobalt for our electric cars and our batteries. Well in this LFP doesn't contain any cobalt, it doesn't contain any nickel. So you can sleep safe at night. You can also sleep safe knowing that it's very safe. You have to do something very stupid to an LFP cell to get it to catch fire. Um, what else? And they last longer than NMC cells. They're long lasting as well. So you can actually charge a, an LFP battery to 100% as much as you like, and it won't have that same form of degradation that you find no. with NMC. It will last longer, and that's obviously a great thing. It protects your purchase, doesn't it? So that's a little stuff about LFP batteries. Uh, what else is there to say? It's 12 kilograms, so it's not very light, but you're not gonna be moving it around too much. And this costs 1,098 pounds, including VAT. And I got that from Amazon. Uh, if you follow the link below, uh, you can have a look yourself. And if you do use this link to buy one, um, I'd be very grateful because then I get some money. So thank you very much. Okay, it's time to open the other one. Okay, let's see what's in here. And let's make it a little bit more festive. That's better. First of all, we have the manual, and there it is. And I can't be definite, but it feels a little bit lighter than the other one. On the side, you'll see the extra battery port. And as you can see, the front is a bit more basic, but it does at least have one of these I can take off, but not now. And at the top here, that opens up. More silica gel, do not eat. And this is where we store the cable, and that's what's gonna to connect to the other battery. So obviously for an expensive battery, I am actually gonna read through the manual. How to store the product. Turn off the product first, and then store it in a dry ventilated place at room temperature, not near water sources, that's kind of obvious. For long-term storage, please discharge the battery to 30% and recharge it to 60% every three months to extend its battery life. That's interesting, isn't it? Between 30 and 60 is its happy place then. 
Can I bring the product on a plane? No. No, you can't. I've read through the manual and it doesn't say that you have to charge it up before using it. So let's turn it on and see what happens. And you can see from there that we're at 30% battery, which is going to last us 83 hours, apparently, which seems like a lot, but then there's nothing plugged into it. As a quick test, let's plug in the phone. Plug in and then hold down. And in theory, that should start charging. Sorry, I can't do that. I said theory, not Siri. So now I'm going to plug in the other battery. But before I do that, I'm going to turn it off. I can probably leave it on, but you know, better safe than sorry, right? Quite a chunky cable. And it only goes in one way round, like that. Okay. First of all, I'm going to turn on the other battery. Also at 30%. Oh, look at that, it turned on this one as well. You know what I love? I love apps. So I think it's time that we download the EcoFlow app and see what that does. So here's EcoFlow, it's good to get. It wants to send me notifications, so yeah, that's fine. User notice, yeah, agree to that, whatever. I've read, yes, I have read the terms and conditions. Create a new account, yes. Okay, well, I'm gonna do this now. Okay, so then you do all the usual stuff about location, services, yes. Allow Bluetooth, yes and all that kind of stuff. Um, put in your Wi-Fi and then it connects. It actually connects automatically, which is really cool because it knows that it's next to the device. That's the wonderful thing about Bluetooth. And here we go. So now it's already connected. It's telling me the output is six watts and it's telling me that that's 24 hours, 45 minutes. That's gonna take at the six watt, the continual six watts. Of course, my phone's almost charged, so that's only gonna be another hour, isn't it, probably? So let's have a look at the app. Uh, when we plug something else in. Okay, well I've got my laptop, so I'm going to plug that in. But plugging in is not enough. You have to... So now the output is going up to 71, 77. Okay, and you can see that with the laptop charging, we're now down to three hours, about three and a half hours of uh, total time. Now most of the time I don't actually use the laptop. So what happens is if there is a power cut, uh, sometimes I lose my work when I'm working on the Mac Mini. So let's hope that this also works as a UPS. If you don't know what a UPS is, it's not the parcel delivery service. It's an uninterruptible power supply. And in theory, I can plug my computer directly into this and then this into the wall. And then when the power goes off, this should kick in and hopefully the Mac Mini won't turn off in that time. It has to switch in like a microsecond across to this. I'm not sure if it's going to work, so let's have a go. First of all, let's plug in the Mac Mini and let's see how much power that draws. And in goes the monitor. So this particular Mac Mini, even with the display on, is only taking up 33 watts at the moment. It's ridiculously low power. This is one of the M1. I'm not going to get into the details. This is one of the M1 Apple Silicon Macs. They're really, really low power. They're fantastic. And this says at the moment, I've got five hours of life with it, which is amazing really, because I'm at 28% on the battery. I'll plug the battery into the wall. As you can hear, it's very loud when it's charging, but this is doing a fast charge. Now, provided you've got the latest firmware, you've got some extra options in the app in terms of the charging speed. So if you click on that, you can see that I think by default, it's at 1200 watts, which is pretty fast. But you've also got some other options here. So optimized battery charging. It will be charged at the speed that is optimized for battery health. So let's try that. That's saying that it's 500 watts and that takes two hours to charge up. But I can also go quiet charging. And that's 200 watts. So that's much better. So while I'm upgrading the firmware, just to say that whatever you've got plugged into this, if this is plugged into the AC power, then whatever's plugged into it will be taking the AC. It won't be using up the battery. At the moment, 
obviously the grid goes, then of course it switches to battery power. But that switching takes 30 milliseconds. It's not instant. Instant for us, but it's not instant for whatever's plugged into it. So it's not a proper UPS. A proper UPS would switch over when the grid fails in zero milliseconds, it would be immediate. So the question of whether it works as a UPS is actually a complicated one because I've tried it on here and it's turned off the computer. I've also tried it a couple of times and it's worked fine. So there we go, let's pretend we've just had a power cut, but the computer is still running. All I would say is don't trust it completely to work. And also it may differ from computer to computer. I'm not quite sure of the technicalities, but so does it work as a UPS? Sometimes. Now something I would like, I would like to be able to tell it just to charge at the cheap rate at night. So cheap rate for me is half past 12 to half past four in the morning. And there is this lab feature, so I guess that's beta stuff that they're doing. So there it is. So from half past 12, save, then AC charging. Well, that's pretty neat. Okay, so now I've done that, it will only charge at half midnight. So that's when my cheap rate starts. The beeping is gonna be really annoying because it'll wake us all up. So let's turn off beep. Now I'm not convinced this is going to work, but let's try charging the leaf using the battery. Now the reason I don't think this is going to work is there's no way of changing the amps on here. You get what you get and it might be too much for the EcoFlow. So yeah, the ready light is flashing and that means that this has power, but it's not going to power the car. And I kind of figured that was going to happen anyway because I tried using this to charge from the Ionic 5 when I had that and that didn't work either. So it's a, just an issue with the leaf really, you can't reduce the amps. But most other EVs these days you probably could. Certainly the Ionic 5 I could reduce the amps by using a little button on here. And if you do that then yes you can charge from the battery or in theory you can charge from the battery. Oh and something I should really mention is these aren't waterproof so obviously I wouldn't have this outside if it was raining. So what do I think of the Delta 2? Well, I've literally only just got it. I mean, this is me trying to work it out while I'm filming. But so far, it seems really good. I mean, I'm happy that I've got something here, you know, just in case everything were to fail. I've got something I can plug the fridge into. That's the main thing. The fridge or the freezer or the computer, if I really, really need it. Just charging devices like phones and even the camera battery, I can do all that. It's portable, so I can put it in the car. So it's obviously not as neat a solution as having a home battery, certainly not as good as having a Tesla Powerwall. I mean, that's the ultimate. But you know, that's 15,000 pounds. And as I said, we don't know how long we'll be at the house. So something like this is an emergency backup and I think it'll work really well for that. But overall, I think this is really good. If you want to get one yourself, then um, please use the link below uh, from Amazon. And um, then I do get a little bit of referral money. So thank you very much if you do that. That's it, I think. Thank you very much for watching. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back very soon. Bye for now.